Uh, just a little uh, introduction or salutation rather. Uh, selamat petang para hadirin uh, sekalian. Uh, terima kasih kerana datang pada hari yang agak hangat ini dan pertama kali Uh, pertama sekali, saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada para penganjur iaitu uh, Marah dan juga Function 8 kerana mengendalikan uh, acara uh, sebegini. So, what I was saying uh, is uh, I'm very thankful that you are here today on on a rather humid uh, day and I would also like to extend my thanks to uh, Marah as well as Function 8 for organizing this event. Okay, uh, I will be reading two poems, uh, two short poems, and they are from a collection that I did uh, in 2001 called History of Amnesia, uh, which is actually published by Ethos Books, of whom uh, Mr. Fong Ho Fang is uh, the publisher. Um, but before that, I think I'd just like to say that uh, one of my interests in the 1987 op spectrum or, or the so-called Marxist conspiracy um, was due to a booklet that the Internal Security Department published in the year 2003. And this document was called Why the ISA? And it was published in the light uh, of the Jama'a Islamia ISA arrests uh, in, I think, around 2002. So what this book purported to do was it tried to legitimize, it tried to justify the use of the ISA, but for me what was most interesting was that inside this book, uh, there was absolutely zero mention of both Operation Cold Store as well as Operation Spectrum. Um, and I thought that was, that was very interesting for me because, uh, you know, silence spoke louder than words. If indeed, you know, you have this document that's trying to convince people that the ISA has been used in a fair way, in a just way, then why were these two very important uh, episodes where the ISA was used, uh, why, why was it actually missing from, from that book? Okay, um, I read two poems and they are both based on uh, Mr. Chia Tai Po. I have never had the privilege of meeting the man in person, uh, but I was using him in my poems basically as, as a kind of symbol, uh, a symbol of resistance, but also I think importantly for me, uh, the symbol of, of the enigma of, of, of conscience. So this poem is called Mr. Chia Takes a Walk Around Sentosa where he was detained. Eh? And uh, I'll start off with a quote by him. This is by Chia Tai Po. Of course the best part of my life is gone. That goes without saying. That if I had those years to live over, I wouldn't do anything differently. I wouldn't have signed the confession they drew up that I was a communist because I never was and I never advocated violence. Chia Tai Po. Mr. Chia takes a walk around Sentosa. Mr. Chia watches the cable cars throwing shadows on the island like a carousel of vultures. He tries to climb into the barrel of a cannon at Fort Siloso. If only he had some gunpowder and a crash helmet, it would not matter where the cannon was aimed. At the musical fountains, Mr. Chia witnesses the miracle of water dancing to melodies. How much less trouble it would have caused him if on the first day he had pleased them with how his pee trajectory could be snake charmed by their whistles. He strays into Butterfly Park and absentmindedly mutters to himself, I am a moth dreaming that I am a butterfly dreaming that I was once a man. At the Wax Museum, Mr. Chia secretly thinks of whose statue he would sculpt from the earwax of all those who refuse to listen to him. Mr. Chia watches the merlion turn color every few seconds. It was turquoise a moment ago, and then it became jaundiced before glowing a gangrenous violet. The merlion's eyes shoot laser beams like searchlights from a watchtower. When the beast turns red, Mr. Chia averts his eyes. A tourist walks up to Mr. Chia and asks that a picture be taken of his wife and him. Mr. Chia thinks, I'm going to trap these people in time. That strand of hair on the woman's cheek, that cloud like a shawl on the man's shoulder. This is the moment when eternity winks. Mr. Chia closes one eye and peeps through the other. 
Eternity sheds a tear and a drop falls on the back of his neck. Mr. Chia keeps one finger on the button and stands absolutely still. Okay, this next poem is called Mr. Chia's Diary. I will begin again with a quotation from Chia Tai Po. This is not about a personal battle. The struggle for democracy is much more than personal battles. I don't feel bitter towards anyone. Democracy is not about violence. They can jail me, but how are they going to jail democracy? One day, I'll get there. We'll all get there. Mr. Chia's Diary. In Mr. Chia's diary, there are no public holidays. Mr. Chia had been on holiday for 32 years. At least that was the version recommended to those who were too young to know better. There are no lists of things to do crossed out with a firm hand. Not even a list of what he could have done had he accepted their offer. The key they promised him which he would have to hang like a fish bait from a hook nailed on his brow for the rest of his life. There are no addresses and telephone numbers of all his friends and enemies since the list is changed every day. There are not even the scribblings of someone desperate to document the watermarks of a dream that had made him cry in his sleep. Images, but what do they mean? Fingerprints in fine sand, a sky clouded by swallows, a fossil used as a paperweight, the weight of a woman's hand made heavier by an absent ring. In Mr. Chia's diary, there are only records that reveal what he had for breakfast, on which day he left the door ajar, the type of gravel on his shoes, but none written in his hand. If Mr. Chia were younger, he would have asked, what kind of man could bring himself to write all this? But now he only asks, what kind of man could they have been writing about? Thank you.